Maybe you only get one. One what? Soulmate or true love? Meredith, I was so sorry to hear about Derek. Oh, thanks. Me too. Who's Derek? What was Derek? Are you telling me that you think that's coming around again? It's just that Derek was... Derek was epic for her. They were the great love story. I mean, that girl's heart beat for Derek Shepard. It just... It never occurred to me that she would ever be with anyone else. He was perfect. He was everything. I mean, that man turned her world. That was different. It's a long story. So what's your story? I don't have a story. I'm just a girl in a bar. Just a guy in a bar. You know what? We don't have to do the thing. Oh, we can do anything you want. No, the thing, exchange the details, pretend we care. Look, I'm gonna go upstairs and take a shower, okay? And when I get back down here, you won't be here. So, um, goodbye. Um. Derek. Derek. <laughs> right, Meredith. Meredith. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Nice meeting you. Bye, Derek. Now, Dr. Shepard, he's over there. Meredith. Can I talk to you for a second? Actually, I was... Dr. Shepard. Dr. Shepard? This morning it was Derek. Now it's Dr. Shepard. Dr. Shepard, we should pretend it never happened. What never happened? You sleeping with me last night? Or are you throwing me out this morning? Because both are fond memories I like to hold on to. No, there will be no memories. I'm not the girl in the bar anymore, and you're not the guy. This can't exist. You get that, right? Hey, I want in on Shepard's surgery. You want to work together? If we find the answer, we have a 50-50 chance of scrubbing in. I'll work with you, but I don't want in on the surgery. You can have it. You're kidding? It's the biggest opportunity any engine will ever get. I don't want to spend any more time with Shepard than I have to. What do you have against Shepard? Are you serious you're not going to tell me why you won't work with Shepard? No. Just tell me. You can't comment, make a face, or react in any way. We had sex. Oh, uh, Dr. Shepard, you said that you'd, you'd pick someone to scrub in if we helped? Oh, yes, right. Um, I'm sorry I can't take you both. It's going to be a full house. Meredith, I'll see you in OR. Screw you. I don't get picked for surgeries because I slept with my boss. Did you choose me for the surgery because I slept with you? Yes. I'm kidding. I'm not going to scrub in for surgery. You should ask Christina. You, you shouldn't let the fact that we had sex get in the way of you taking your shot. That was amazing. Yeah. Yeah. I'll see you around. See you around. See ya. Seattle has ferry boats. Yes. I didn't know that. I've been living here six weeks. I didn't know there were ferry boats. Seattle is surrounded by water on three sides. Hence the ferry boats. Now I have to like it here. I wasn't planning on liking it here. I'm from New York. Genetically engineered to dislike everywhere, except Manhattan. I have a thing for ferry boats. I'm not going out with you. Did I ask you to go out with me? Do you want to go out with me? I'm not dating you, and I'm definitely not sleeping with you again. You're my boss. I'm your boss's boss. You're my teacher, and my teacher's teacher, and you're my teacher. I'm your sister, I'm your daughter. You're sexually harassing me. I'm riding an elevator. Look, I'm drawing a line. The line is drawn. There's a big line. But this line? Is it imaginary, or do I need to get you on the marker? I kissed Derek. She kissed Derek? In the elevator. Oh, you kissed him in the elevator? I was having a bad day. This is what you do on your bad days. Make out with Dr. McTreamy. So we're kissing, but we're not dating? I knew that was going to come up. Don't get me wrong, I like the kissing. I'm all for the kissing. Or kissing, I say. I have no idea what that was about. Is it going to happen again? Because if it is, I need to bring breath mints. Put a condom in my wallet. Shut up now. <laughs> so, it's intense. This thing I have for uh, ferry boats, I mean. I'm so taking the stairs this time. No self control. It's sad. Really. We had sex, once. And we kissed in an elevator. And we kissed in an elevator, once. No, seriously. Well, come on, go out with me. No. 
You know, I almost died today. Yeah, I came like this close. How would you feel if I died? And you didn't get a chance to go out with me. Get over yourself already. Come on. It's the chase, isn't it? What? The thrill of the chase. I've been wondering to myself, why are you so hell-bent on getting me to go out with you? You know you're my boss. You know it's against the rules. You know I keep saying no. It's the chase. Well, it's fun, isn't it? You see? This is a game to you, but not to me. Because unlike you, I still have something to prove. Okay, I have more important things to deal with than you. I have roommates and boy problems. Just stay out of my face. And for the record, you smell like crap. She attacked me. Meredith, 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 Meredith. You know what? You might want to leave before I change my mind and let her beat you to a pulp with a tiny infectious fist. <sighs> what? Nothing. It's just... Nothing. not the chase. What? You and me. It is not the thrill of the chase. It's not a game. It's... It's your tiny ineffectual fists. And your hair. My hair? It smells good. And you're very, very bossy. It keeps me in line. I'm still not going out with you. You say that now. What do you know? Tell me. No. I'm not the intern who's screwing and attending. Look, I'm not being seen with you in this hospital. Learn it, live it. It's unprofessional. Think of it as an attending getting to know one of his interns. He slept with the intern. He barely knew her. And it should stay that way. You want me to be professional? I'll be professional. That's what I want. And that's what you get. Nice talking to you, Dr. Gray. You okay? Yeah, yeah, I'm good. You sure? Because you seem not okay. I'm fine. Well, let me take you out to dinner tonight. Real food, waiters, big chunks of carbs in a basket. I can't. Forget about the party. You know about the party? Your friends will be at the party. You and I can be alone somewhere else. How do you know about the party? Thanks for not inviting me, by the way. That felt good. Dinner. Think about dinner. Perfect opportunity. So you blew me off for a bottle of tequila. Tequila's no good for you. Doesn't call, doesn't write. It's not nearly as much fun to wake up to. Take me for a ride, Derek. <laughs> Listen to me. What? We should probably sneak inside now. Oh, we've done enough sneaking for the night. It was good sneaking, but enough sneaking. Yeah, I'd say we're pretty good sneakers. Crap. Crap. You're avoiding me. Yes. Oh, are we going to talk about this? No. About us and Bailey and what she saw. I don't need to talk about it. I experienced it naked. This, this is getting complicated. Complicated for me. I'm the intern sleeping with the attending. I was a better guy. I'd walk away. Yes, you would. Do you want me to be a better guy? Yes. No. Crap. Look, I'm not going to advertise your extracurricular activities with my intern. However, the next time I see you favoring Meredith Gray in any way, I'll make sure she doesn't see the inside of an OR for a month. Just for the sake of balance. Number ready, 4672. Dr. Shepard. Since you're clearly uncomfortable with my decision in this case, it's probably best you don't scrub in. You won't be missed. Shepard's a jackass. Really? I think he's kind of great. You mean go out front of Bailey. Why? Because he's a jackass. Okay. I can take care of myself. I got myself into this mess, and I... And you'll get yourself out? I don't know that yet. Sorry I called you a jackass. You didn't. I did. Twice. Tell you what, Blondie. If you don't marry him, I will. I, um, know this place where there's an amazing view of sunrise. 
over the ferry boats. I have a thing for ferry boats. I remember. You have to leave before they see you. Oh, come on. Why you just let them see you? <laughs> no. Please. No, no. They can't be. He's her boss. He's all of our boss. You know, she has been scrubbing in a lot lately on his surgeries. No, Meredith wouldn't sleep with him, just no. Well, if she's not ashamed of it, why is she keeping it a secret? Do they know it's McDreamy keeping them up all night? I hope not. I already have Bailey riding me. I don't need my roommates thinking I'm getting special treatment. You know about him and Meredith? You know? I'm gonna figure out that I know everything. But she knows. All about Dr. Sest. It's been going on for like ever. Okay, to tell me what you think you're doing. Look, I'll jump through hoops if you want me to. But what I do when I leave this hospital is my business. Half this hospital knows your business. I made a choice, and I know you don't respect me for that choice. But I'll live with the consequences. What is your problem? Um, you. Because apparently you can help Dr. McDreamy in ways the rest of us can't. You saw me leave the house this morning, didn't you? Oh, is that you? I'm not using her. And I don't favor her. She's pretty great, you know. Mm -hmm. You have their respect without even trying, and you're throwing it away for what? A few good surgeries? No. It's not about the surgeries. It's not about getting ahead. Then what? A little hot sex? You're willing to ruin your credibility over that? I mean, Meredith, what the hell are you doing? Oh my god. You're falling for him. I am not. Oh, you so are. It's just that I hardly know anything about you. You know I'm from New York. You know I like ferry boats. Enough with the ferry boats. What about your friends? I'm a surgeon. I don't have friends. Everybody has friends. I mean, who do you hang out with? What do you do on your days <sighs> off? These are important questions. Ah, important. For who? We're having sex every night. I think I deserve details. You have more details than most. See, this is going somewhere weird. I want facts, and until I get them, my pants are staying on. Or you could just roll with it. Be flexible, see what happens. I'm not flexible. <laughs> ah, there, I disagree. We'll find these things out. That's the fun part, you know? It's just so surprising. Well, you don't always get what you expect, do you? What is your problem? Give me something to go on. Anything. What are your grandparents' names? I don't have grandparents. Where'd you grow up? What's your favorite flavor of ice cream? Where'd you spend your summer vacations? Lighten up. It'll be good for your blood pressure. Oh, don't you tell me to lighten up. You know, you keep taking everything on faith. How do you know what's real and what's not? You just do. You know, some people would call this a relationship. Who? Who would call it that? Me. I would. And I'm supposed to believe you. Mm -hmm. Show me something. Give me a reason to believe. All right. My mother's maiden name, Maloney. I have four sisters. I have um, nine nieces, five nephews. I like coffee ice cream, single malt scotch, occasionally a good cigar, I like the fly fish. And I cheat when I do the crossword puzzle on Sunday. And I never dance in public. Um, favorite novel, Sun Also Rises. Favorite band, The Clash. Favorite color is blue. I don't like light blue, indigo. The scar right here on my forehead, that's why I don't ride motorcycles anymore. And I live in that trailer. All this land is mine. I have no idea what I'm gonna do with it. So that's it. That's all you've earned for now. The rest you're just... It's gonna have to take on faith. Aren't you gonna get that? I'm over the hospital. It's not. Maybe we should, you know, make some more. We should. Okay. Okay. Meredith, he's an attending. You're an intern. You're making a mistake. A big one. It's not a mistake. Meredith, I'm so sorry. Addison, what are you doing here? Well, you'd know if you bothered to return any one of my phone calls. 
Hi, I'm Addison Shepard. Shepard? And you must be the woman who's been screwing my husband. You look familiar. You have been here before? Once. That worked out really well. I know that look. It will be one of two things. Either your boss has given you hell or your boyfriend is. Which is it? My boyfriend is my boss, which was a problem. But not as big a problem as the fact that my boyfriend has a wife. Addison, what are you doing here? What are you doing here? You just pick up and leave everything? Your house, your practice, your friends. You had a life in Manhattan. Had. And now you have a girlfriend in Seattle. Meredith. Go away. Just wait. We should discuss this. Here's a thought. No. Quit following me. At least let me explain. Explain? You know what you should have explained? The night we met in the bar, before any of the rest of it. Yeah, that would have been a good time to discuss this. Look, I know how you feel. Do you? Somehow I doubt that. Because if you did, you would shut up, and you would turn around and go back inside, because you would realize that I am this close to getting in my car and running you down in the parking lot. And you look nice today. Wear my new lip gloss. Because my ex-boyfriend's wife looks like Isabella freaking Rossellini, and I'm like, me. I'm trying to outdo her when she's the victim here. How crazy is that? Not crazy. As an ex-boyfriend? I'm an evil mistress. You understand? No, no, I don't understand. Well, she's sleeping with your husband, right? Miss Phillips, I lack Dr. Gray's class and patience, so let me set the record straight. My husband didn't cheat on me, I cheated on him. So I go upstairs. As I'm walking down the hall, I'm trying to prepare myself for what I'm gonna see when I go into my bedroom. I step in a man's jacket that doesn't belong to me. And what I know now is that when I go into my bedroom, I'm not just gonna see that my wife is cheating on me. I'm gonna see that my wife is cheating on me with Mark, who happened to be my best friend. Hmm. I left and came out of here. And you met me. And I met you. Well, what was I to you? The girl you screwed to get over being screwed? You were like coming up for fresh air. It's like I was drowning and you saved me. It's not enough. So you really broke up with Shepard? I feel empty. Two hours of vomiting will do that to you. No, I feel empty. You're stalking me. Stop it. Did we not communicate last night? Yes. Did you hear what I was saying? Your wife screwed your best friend. And then from that point on, she no longer existed to me anymore. It's not enough. How can that not be enough? When you waited two months to tell me, and I had to find out by her showing up, all leggy and fabulous, and telling me herself, you pulled the plug. I'm a sink with an open drain. Anything you say runs right out. There is no enough. Addison and I are over, Adele. It's not like we're divorced. Practically divorced. I told Meredith what happened. I did. What'd you tell her? Meredith. Sometimes people do desperate things to get someone's attention. There are two sides to every story. Wow, that's your side of this, that I didn't pay you enough attention. We didn't even bother to fight anymore, Derek. And Mark was there, and I missed you. And now I'm sorry, I'm more sorry than you can possibly imagine, but at least I'm talking to you about it. Derek. I'm a sink with an open drain, Eddie. Don't. Sorry. Don't be sorry. I'm so tired of you being sorry. Are you concerned about Alex finding out about us? Is that what matters to you? Do you care that I was the intern stupid enough to screw the merit attending? No. It's okay. It's not okay. You have a wife who's not easy to hate, who's annoyingly kind and painfully smart. You just... Don't! Stop talking to me like you're my boyfriend. Stop talking to me at all. You know, the way I see it, we could deal with us in one of three ways. Option one, I could apologize, you could forgive me and come home and we could move on with our lives like adults. Or option two, I could apologize, you could forgive me, come home, but you can still bring it up to use against me whenever we argue. What's the third? I don't know what the third option is. I just know I still love you. I'm just exhausted of you. Hating you is the most exhausting. I don't want to do it anymore. Meredith, kiss me. Addison, kiss me. My wife and my girlfriend, kiss me. Everything's gonna be fine.
Addison will go back to New York. Meredith and I will start over. Everything's gonna be fine, right? You so damn stupid. You've got a life. Yes. Your life is complicated. Yes. I don't need complicated. I have complicated all on my own. Addison's leaving. She doesn't have any more patients in this hospital. There's no reason for her to be here. No reason. None whatsoever. You know, you are going to forgive me eventually, right? I mean, you can't just... I mean, there was a time where you thought of me as your best friend. There was a time where I thought you were the love of my life. Divorce papers. Your lawyer said they're okay. I haven't signed them yet. The ball's in your court. If you sign, I'll sign. I'll sign and be on the first plane out of here. I'll sign them immediately. I want you out of here as soon as possible. Derek, have you ever thought that even if I am Satan and an adulterous bitch, that I still might be the love of your life? Mary, she gave me divorce papers, but she filed. Oh. Well, that's good. All I have to do is sign, and I'm free. I'm free. Is there anything to think about? No, of course not. Look, I don't want someone who doesn't want me, Meredith. But if there's the slightest chance that he does, I'm not leaving Seattle. I don't want to have this conversation again. Meredith. You didn't sign the divorce papers. Fine, I get it. End of discussion. Meredith. What? Oh. I usually just say Meredith and then you yell at me. I haven't thought past that point. I actually didn't have anything planned. Ow. Seriously? Seriously? Meredith. Your wife is looking for you. Oh my God, this is hard for me, Meredith. Well, let me make it easy then. I'm not gonna be that woman, the one who breaks up a marriage or begs you to want me. You can sign the papers or you cannot. The choice is yours. Either way, when it comes to this relationship, I'm a Look, I was married for 11 years. Addison is my family. That is 11 Thanksgivings, 11 birthdays, and 11 Christmases. And one day, I'm supposed to sign a piece of paper and end my family? A person doesn't do that, not without a little hesitation. I'm entitled to a little uncertainty here. Just a moment to understand the magnitude of what it means to cut somebody out of my life. I'm entitled to at least one moment of painful doubt. And a little understanding from you would be nice. I lied. I'm not out of this relationship. I'm in. I'm so in, it's humiliating because here I am begging. Meredith, just shut just... up. You say Meredith and I yell, remember? Yeah. Okay. Here it is. Your choice, it's simple. Her or me. And I'm sure she's really great. But Derek, I love you. In a really, really big, pretend to like your taste in music. Let you eat the last piece of cheesecake. Hold a radio over my head outside your window. Unfortunate way that makes me hate you. Love you. So pick me. Choose me. Love me. I'll be at Joe's tonight, so if you do decide to sign the papers, meet me there. He doesn't love her. He can't. But he'll stay with her anyway. She's his wife. You think he'll show? He'll show. You haven't signed those divorce papers yet, have you? God, why does this have to be so hard? It's not hard. It's painful, but it's not hard. Well, you know what to do already. If you didn't, you wouldn't be in so much pain. You gonna sign those divorce papers or not? He's really not coming. You're leaving? No, 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 you can't. I don't want to miss the ending. Maybe it's for the best. Maybe I don't want to know. That's the stupidest thing I've ever heard. Why? Of course the cost of that decision has yet to be determined. You're late. Oh, hey, Joe told me to tell you that McSteamy came looking for you. You mean McDreamy? Joe said McDreamy came looking for me? Does that mean you picked her? So, any news about... No. I can't read him. You know, I, th I think it's pretty amazing you even gave him the choice. And I think, for what it's worth, I think he's crazy if he doesn't pick you. Hey. Hi. You know I am. I went to the bar. I heard. You're staying with her. Yeah, she's my wife. Look, you can't do this. You don't have the right. Not anymore. I just want to find out if she's okay. No, she's not. She's a human traffic accident, and everybody's slowing down to look at the wreckage. Are you going to stop talking to Meredith? I will. When? 
Maybe I'm not ready yet. Are you ever gonna be ready, Derek? What if I say no? You could at least acknowledge I exist. See the ring? Don't go to the ring. The ring, Derek, remember? If we were here at work, you won't talk to me. Or on the ferry where you pretend not to see me. Or in couples therapy three times a week where we're arguing about whether or not we should be in couples therapy. What are we doing? I miss you. Do you love her? I don't know. It's good that you're trying. You wouldn't be you if you weren't the kind of person who was trying to make it work. You think so? Yeah. Means I wasn't wrong about you. Thanks. <sighs> Goodbye, Derek. Bye, Meredith. How long have you two been seeing each other? We're not seeing each other. We met last night at Joe's. Joe's bar? Mm -hmm. I met a girl there once myself. Yeah. Very long time ago. I just didn't know you two were dating. Well, you knew what would happen eventually. Eventually feels a lot different than actually. Yeah, I guess it does. Well, it's surprisingly painful. I'm not saying this to hurt you. Well, because I want to leave you, because I don't. Meredith wasn't a fling. She wasn't revenge. I fell in love with her. That doesn't go away because I decided to stay with you. I have a dog. Oh, you know what? I love dogs. I've moved on, so don't give me that look. A look. That look. Our look. I'm over you. I'm over you, too. You are? No. Oh. Well, I am. Over you. I'm over you too. You just said. Shut up. Hi. Bye. And you were shrieking about the fact that I said I love Meredith. Loved. What? You said you loved her. Past tense. Right, yes, past tense. You're being honest? The last time you called him McDreamy, you were all a Twitter with love. We're just friends. Uh huh. We are. I was being nice to her. Okay. I can be nice without being. We dreamy, I know. I lied about Derek. We're not just friends. I mean, I'm not. He's still McDreamy. You don't have to do this, you know. What I, you know, I got all this land. I'm just going to waste it. Derek. It's just a dog doesn't mean anything. Okay. Good night. But here's the truth about the truth. It hurts. The man I love has a wife. And then he chooses her over me. And that wife takes my dog. Okay, she didn't take the dog. I gave it to her. But I didn't mean to give it to her. I meant to give it to him. But that does not change the fact that she's got my McDreamy. And my McDog. She's got my McLife. And what have I got? Do you know I can't remember the last time we kissed? Because you never think the last time is the last time. You think there'll be more. You think you have forever, but you don't. How is the girl with the bomb? It's Meredith. The girl with the bomb is Meredith. Meredith, I want you to look at me. You pretend that I'm someone you like. I'm scared. I know. You can do this. W where is she? She's right here. Derek. You're OK. That is not the she he was asking for. I can't remember our last kiss. All I could think about was I'm gonna die today and I can't remember her last kiss, which is pathetic, but the last time we were together and happy, I wanna be able to remember that. It was a Thursday morning. Mm -hmm. You just washed your hair and you smelled like some kind of flower. You leaned to me, you put your hand on my chest, and you kissed me. You know, like we'd do it every day for the rest of our lives. My hair smelled like lavender. Lavender. You guy's pretty much a goner, huh? Sensitivity. I like that in a stranger. Are you new here? Visiting. Confounded by all the rain, and it's only my first day in town. You get used to it. it. Makes me want to stay in bed all day. We just met, and already you're talking about bed. 
Do you ever go out with co-workers? Are you hitting on me in a hospital? Would that be wrong? Meredith. <laughs> what the hell was that? That was Mark. I miss you, Addison. I'm in love with my husband, Mark. But he's not in love with you. He's in love with that intern, and he's not even trying to hide it. You're still in love with her? You're still in love with him. Well, she won't show, you know. He's not the kind of guy you leave if you can help it. What if you're wrong? What if just this once, life comes down on the side of the dirty mistresses? George, please. I did a thing that I, I can't even believe I did, and I was sad, and oh, I'm pretty sure I'm going to lose all my friends. You won't lose me. You're not my friend. Yes, I am. Well, I could be. I'm a very good friend. No, we can't be friends. We could be friends. You'd be lucky to have me. How? How can we be friends? We could. I'd be fun. I could be your friend, Mary. No, we can't be friends. So. So. Just friends. Just friends. Come on, you can talk to me. As a friend. As a friend. I slept with George, and it was a horrible mistake. No more men. No more men. Really? You? And I'm asking, because we are friends. Every guy I meet turns out to be married. Oh, ouch. Sorry. Or Mark. OK, I'm going to go over there now. Sorry. Or remember the horrible thing I did remember, George. You're making a sweater. I am making a sweater. We finally meet. So you and Derek, uh, you're together? Uh, Derek and I are um, just friends. He's married, and I'm knitting a sweater. So you're single? Single. I asked because I was wondering if you would like to go out with me. Not dating. The vet asked me if we... What? What did he ask you? If we were together. Uh -huh. And I set him straight. Hey. Hey. Is he sick again? Yeah. I never should have told you about George. No, it's fine. I'm glad I know about him and the vet. You really get around. What did you just say to me? It's unforgivable. I don't remember ever asking you to forgive me. So was the knitting a phase? Who's next? Alex? Because I hear he likes to sleep around. You two have that in common. You don't get to call me a whore. When I met you, I thought I had found the person that I was going to spend the rest of my life with. I was done. So all the boys and all the bars and all the obvious daddy issues, who cared? Because I was done. You left me. You chose Addison. I'm all glued back together now. I make no apologies for how I chose to repair what you broke. You don't get to call me a whore. This thing with us is finished. It's over. Finally. Yeah, it's done. It is done. I mean, is there something going on? No. no. Did you guys have a fight or something? No. So, we're all still... Friends? Yes. yes. So you're not good at telling what's going on between you and Meredith? I told you there's nothing to tell. Are you sleeping with my husband? Not since before I knew he was married. OK. Except, you know, it just, it felt like in the vet's office this morning, and then again in the elevator, it felt a little like you two were having a lover's quarrel. No, we're not. I've moved on. I'm dating Finn. Like how you pretend to love me, but really you're just using me to fill some need you have to be a good guy. Now it's not the time to talk about this. We'll talk about this no, later. Walk away? That's all I get? Calm down, please. What? what? You're not going to yell at me, call me names, or I, I don't know, ignore me in an elevator? What do you want from me, Addison? I want you to care. I sleep with your best friend and you walk away. He comes out here from New York and rubs it in your face, and still you get a good night's sleep. What do I have to do? Oh, I know. Maybe what I should do is go out on a date with the vet, because that seems to be something that sends you into a blind rage. Oh, but wait, that won't work either, because I'm not Meredith Grey. I can't compete. He's not having an affair. He's not trying to hurt me. He's just, well, the only people who don't know Derek loves Meredith are Derek and Meredith. 
How do I compete with that? Hey. Hey. Have you seen Meredith? Uh, I don't think she's here yet. This whole thing brings back very traumatic memories of being a band geek with braces and lisp, spending the whole evening with Skippy Gold talking about Star Wars. So, you want to um, dance? Love to. You have plans. I have plans. No, I'm not all right, okay? Are you satisfied? I'm not all right. Because you have a wife, and you call me a whore, and our dog died, and now you're looking at me. Stop looking at me. I'm not looking at you. I am not looking at you. You are looking at me, and you watch me. And Finn has plans, and I like Finn. He's perfect for me, and I'm really trying here to be happy, and I can't breathe. I can't breathe with you looking at me like that, so just stop. I think I want to look at you. But I wouldn't rather be looking at my wife. I'm married. I have responsibilities. She, she doesn't drive me crazy. She doesn't make it impossible for me to feel normal. She doesn't make me sick to my stomach thinking about my veterinarian touching her with his hands. Oh man, I would give anything not to be looking at you. You had sex with Derek in an exam room at the prom? Yes. Last night. You and Shepard did it. Yes. Well, what did Derek say? He said, Meredith. What does this mean? What does this mean? I don't know. Well, are you going to go back to Finn? Meredith? Is Shepard leaving his wife? Our marriage is over. Yeah, I guess it is. You ever tell Meredith? You ever tell her that you love her? No. I don't know what happened last night between you and Derek. And, and I don't want to know. All right, we never said that we were exclusive. But you have plans. Well, I didn't say I wasn't pissed off. I said we weren't exclusive. And Derek, <laughs> he's bad for you. But me, I'm a good thing. And if there's a race, if there is a, a, a ring, my hat is in. So, what does this mean? It means you have a choice. You have a choice to make. And I don't want to rush you into making a decision before you're ready. This morning, I, I was going to come over, and I was going to say, but now all I can say is that I'm in love with you. I've been in love with you forever. I'm a little late. I, I know I'm a little late in telling you that. I, I just... I just want you to take your time. Take all the time you need. Because you have a choice to make. And when I have a choice to make, I choose wrong. Finn! Derek. Hey. Thanks for coming. Both of you, thanks for coming. So, here's the thing. I like you. And I like you. And I thought I had a choice to make. I thought I had to decide. But I think I owe myself the chance to consider my options. Op options? There's this thing that allows for the considering of options. In the olden days, they called it dating. Dating? Both of us? Yes, and I understand if you're not up for it. You bowing out? No. You? I don't think so. Meredith and Finn. 50 down on whether Shepard shows up to challenge Finn to a duel. Here we go, here we go. Okay. <clears throat> come on, 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 come on. Takes it like a man and walks away. He's coming back. Oh, yeah. oh yes, he is. Mm -mm. Give me my money, Mary Jane. That's fair. Oh, God. I'm so sorry about this. What? Hi. You having lunch? In fact, we are. Oh, it looks good. You know, I'm sorry to interrupt, but it's okay. Now I owe Finn another date. That's okay. He needs all the help he can get. You think he can't take the heat? I think he's out of his league. But you gotta hand it to the guy for trying. Dinner was excellent. Are you coming in? I don't know. Am I? 
Well, you could come in for a drink or a uh, uh, coffee. I owe you one from this morning. Yeah, you do. <laughs> Hi! Finn. I want him to be the one, but I would know if he was the one, right? You knew, right? I didn't know. I just... There's the kind of guy... I just knew he wouldn't hurt me. I mean, not on purpose, anyway. Not the way I hurt him. He hurt me when he chose you. Were you just talking to Mary? Don't hurt her again. You really like her, don't you? Yeah. You deserve to be with somebody who makes you happy. Somebody who's not going to complicate your life. Somebody who won't hurt you. He's a better guy. Meredith. Finn's the better guy. I'm walking away. So it's Derek. I'm sorry. Can I ask why? You are a great guy. You're a wonderful guy. And you may even be the better guy. But... He's the one. And I wish he wasn't. <laughs> He's gonna hurt you again. And when he does, I won't be here. Well, you haven't told McDreamy that you don't make that. Oh, I haven't done that yet? Dude, tell him already. She's scared. I am not scared. Derek walked away. He walked away. And maybe that's a good thing. I mean, maybe he's happier. Maybe he's moved on. The divorce is my fault. Let me take responsibility. We both had affairs. You had a one-night stand with Mark. Derek, actually, well, it was... Right, okay, it was two, two nights. You made a mistake. Meredith and I, we had a relationship. It wasn't a one-night stand. What? Mark and I, it wasn't a one-night stand. I was in love with him. I broke up with Finn. Derek hasn't called yet. I told him I broke up with Finn a week ago. Meredith. Meredith, this is my sister, Nancy. Oh, sister. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh. <laughs> you're, you're one of Derek's sisters. Yeah. <laughs> well, I knew you didn't think I was the wife, seeing as you already ran her off. So tell me about the slutty girl. Fine, the slutty intern. It was a slutty part I had a problem with. Kathleen says she's not even single. She is single. She's wonderful. She's smart. She's a lot of things. And she's none of your business, Nancy. Wow. I've never seen you like this over a girl. Even Addison. I've never been like this over a girl. Especially Addison. Uh, I, you know, I should have called. But she didn't. I think I need a little time to... Take some space. I'm Derek Shepard. Huh. <laughs> what are you doing? We met at this party, remember? We met, and we, or you said, uh, I'm just a girl. I said, I'm just a guy. And we started this thing. We started this thing, you didn't know anything about me. The good, the bad, the wife. You didn't even know my name. You didn't know me. I want you to know me. I want to start over from the beginning. So hi, Derek Shepard. Hi, I'm Meredith Gray. You left without me. Now you're not talking to me. You get that I'm saying I'm sorry, right? You yelled at me for no reason, and then you walked away, and now you show up here. Of course we showed up. Why wouldn't I? You don't trust me? I do. Okay, well, this is how it works. You fight sometimes, and somebody apologizes. Well, how am I supposed to know that? You've never done this before. No, I've never done this before. Hmm. Okay, all right. What well, this is... <sighs> From now on, you can expect that I'm gonna show up. Even if I yell. Even if you yell. I'm always gonna show up. You're happy now. Anyone can fall in love and be blindly happy. I raised you to be an extraordinary human being. So imagine my disappointment when I wake up after five years and discover that you're no more than ordinary. You're what happened to her. I'm oh, sorry. I, an attending, a neurosurgeon. No wonder she's so unfocused. I don't think you understand. Oh, I, I understand. I understand perfectly. I've seen men like you before. Threatened by a woman who's their equal. You just want someone to admire you. And you don't care about the damage you do to her along the way. You are not my knight in shining whatever. Oh, so we're going to fight because I pulled you out of the top. You're everywhere all the time saying things. This is the happy ever after part. And in the happily ever after part, the guy is there all the time saying things. And the girls love it. Just for the record, I am your knight in shining whatever. You like it, Mary? 
You haven't told me, and I've been asked now we have a problem. What? No, I don't want to get married. You want to get married? No. Good. So if that's not it, what is it? It isn't anything. Meredith, okay? Okay. Use your words. Where exactly is Meredith? On that day, I came out of the water. I spent the scariest hour of my life trying to breathe for you. I don't know if I want to keep trying to breathe for you. You, know, you love somebody? You think you can handle it all? You've done all right, both of you. I came out here to be chief, and Meredith complicates that. Huh. Now, if this turns into an either or, you pick the person you love, end of story. Look, all of this means nothing if you're alone. When I drowned, it was different for you than it was for me. Something happened to me. I want to be better at everything, and I want to let you in. Just now is not the time to give up on me, okay? That's what I'm saying. Okay. Okay? Yep. Yeah. I met a woman last night. You met a woman last night? At Joe's. Nothing happened. So should I be worried or something? Should you be worried that I met a woman? No. Should you be worried that, for me, flirting with that woman was a highlight of my week? Yeah, you should be worried or something. If you want to break up with me so you can see other women, just do it. Don't tell me you met another woman. Just end it if that's what you want. I can't. Sure you can. Here's how it goes. Meredith, I don't want to see you anymore. Meredith, I don't love you anymore. Meredith. I do love you. Don't you see? I understand. You're the love of my life. I can't leave you. But you're constantly leaving me. So I'm asking you, if you don't see a future for us, if you're not in this, please just end it because I can't. I'm in it. Put me out of my misery. Meredith and I, we may not make it. I think I want it more than she does. It's over. So over. Meredith, you were lucky. Man. That girl jerked you around. I have no idea what you're talking about. Hey, I'm just. Seem like you could use a friend about now. Mary's mother never wanted her. And her father was never man enough to hang around. She has a right to be damaged. And us together, it's a big step for her. Her best friend gets left on the altar, and all she sees now is things like this. They don't work. She panics. She wants this. She doesn't know how to have it. And you know what? That's not her fault. So don't ever talk to me about Meredith Ray again, because you do not know what you're talking about. So this is it? Yeah. We're breaking up. We're breaking up. Okay, sex and mockery it is. You and Meredith are back together, and you've been up all night doing the horizontal salsa. Mambo, horizontal mambo. Meredith and I were just friends. Oh. Where are we going? You know, I was thinking maybe we could uh, go to the cafeteria. You might be hungry. Why are you looking at me like that? Derek, we agreed. S&M only. S&M? Sex and mockery. Right, S&M. Mm. I kicked a man out of my bed in the middle of the night. The world's most perfect man who loves me, and I can't let him. Hey. Hey. How are you today? Good. Great. She's doing McDreamy and lying about it. You go ahead, I'll wait a minute. So this isn't just breakup sex. It's a secret breakup sex. Meredith isn't telling Christina about us. I thought you broke that off. I meant to. You think she's gonna wanna get back together? No. You think she's gonna grow up and get all whole and want a relationship? I do not. I wanna marry you. I wanna have kids with you. I wanna build this house. I want to settle down and grow old with you. I want to die when I'm 110 years old in your arms. I don't want 48 uninterrupted hours. I want a lifetime. Do you see what happens? I say things like that, and you fight the urge to run in the opposite direction. It's okay. 
I understand. You're just getting started. And I've been doing this for a long time. And you're not ready. I'm not ready right now. But things could stay the way they are. And I can get ready. I'll get ready. And I'll wait. I'll wait until you're ready. But what if, what if while I'm waiting, I meet someone who is ready to give me what I want from you? What if you do? I don't know. Just can't stop seeing Derek. And it's not about the sex, it's not. About the sex. It's about that moment afterward. And the world stops. It just feels so safe. I'm not ready to give that up. I think they're on a date. That's definitely a date, right? She's nice. She asked me out. Derek went on a date with Sydney Heron last night. It's probably a fake date to make me think he's healthy and moving on. And do you think he's healthy and moving on? I just don't think you're ready. Do you want to get out of here? I do. My problem is I'm sleeping with a man who's dating. And I don't care if he dates Sydney. It's the woman he dates after Sydney. That's my problem. But if I had any sense at all, I would break up with the breakup sex. What? I think I'm gonna be late. I don't want you to date other people. It may not be enough for you. But I'm trying here, so I don't want you to date anybody but me. Except, I'm scared as hell to want you. But here I am, wanting you anyway. And fear means I have something to lose, right? And I don't want to lose you. Meredith told me she doesn't want me seeing other people. She found out about you and Rose? No, nothing to find out, it was just a kiss. That uh, kiss was... Unexpected. I like kissing you. I enjoyed kissing you, but I, I'm seeing somebody. Meredith Gray. Everybody knows about you, Meredith Gray. I have to see it through. I'm sorry. Don't be. It's just a kiss. He wants to build us a house with kids' bedrooms and French doors, and that scares me to death. Why? Just because the rose thing? Well, that shouldn't scare you. It was just one kiss. One kiss. Yeah, I wasn't eavesdropping. It wasn't like they were being secretive about it. It was just something that happened. Now that you guys are back together, it's not happening anymore, so. Derek kissed Rose? Who's Rose? Rose is a circulating nurse. I kissed her once. I'm sure you know that. That's why you're asking me. When? When? When did you kiss her? Yesterday. Now, I was so, going to talk. So, yesterday you were making out with scrub nurses, and today you were building your dream house. Yesterday we were dating other people. That's not the point. That is the point. I told you I wanted to marry you. I wanted to build a house and a life with you that you weren't ready. And roses. You don't want to build a life with me. You want someone. You want someone who wants the same things that you want. I can't do this anymore. I can't do the fighting, the back and forth. I can't. Are we together or are we not? We were together. I was in love with you. You didn't tell me you were married. OK, so now we're going to have that fight again. You didn't tell me about your nurse. You want to know why I'm not ready to build a house with you. This is why, because I cannot trust you. You can't trust anybody. And no matter what I do, you're always going to look for reasons not to trust me. I can't do it anymore. Well, neither can I. She's wretched and mean. She's not. You know, I heard one of the nurses saying that they've only been on five dates. Yeah, because Derek knows she's wretched and she's mean. You guys, I know you're trying to make me feel better, but I have to tell you, this pausing to talk about Rose and Derek. Don't worry, he and Rose won't last. I don't like her. I'm sorry, but as your friend, it's my job to say it. I don't like Rose. Are you serious about this woman? I don't know. Could be. You broke up with Meredith Grey? Well, what the hell happened? Derek, what are you doing? I'm seeing somebody else. She's lovely. Are you letting him get away? Because I swear to God, Meredith, if you let him ride off into the sunset with that doe-eyed little thing. Rose, he's with Rose, he's with Rose, he's with Rose. 
Derek is with Rose, and I'm okay that Derek is with Rose. Mm -hmm. I'll stay. I mean, we can, I, I, we can stay together. How'd it go? I was heading home and I didn't know if you wanted Yeah, right. Um, I need to stay here tonight. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, I'll just, Rose, wait. No, I'll stay. If you want me to stay, I'll, I'll stay. No, you should go be with Rose. I slept with her. The whole time I was thinking about Meredith. He's with Rose. He's with Rose. Okay, so he's with Rose, so what? And if he's with Rose, that means he's not with you. And do you know why he's not with you? You're scared. That's where love exists, in delusional fantasies. Real love isn't like that. Good to know. You intimidate me a little. I mean, you're not an intimidating person, but the legend of Meredith and Derek, it's intimidating. There's no legend. You've done it, right? With each other? He, I've, he's, done, he's done it and I've done it. Yeah. What's it like? Is it magical? Yes. Can be. With the right person. I don't want to work with you. I don't want to see you. I don't want to talk to you. We are done. I fail her over and over and over. You mean them? When you say fail her. You have to go tell Derek. No. You have to tell Derek. It's the kind of news he'd want to hear from you. Rose. It's the stuff of legends. Derek! He's not there. Oh. Meredith? Meredith? You been? I've been waiting and waiting for you. And I did this stupid, embarrassing, humiliating, corny thing. And I was just gonna tell you that this over here is our kitchen. And this is our living room. And over there, that's the room where our kids could play. I had this whole thing about I was gonna build us a house, but I don't build houses because I'm a surgeon. And now I'm here feeling like a lame ass loser. I got all whole and healed. I'm still mad at you. And I don't know if I trust you. I want to trust you, but I don't know if I do. So I'm just going to try. I'm going to try and trust you because I believe that we can be extraordinary together rather than ordinary apart. And I want to be. In order to kiss you the way I want to kiss you, in order to do more than kiss you, I need to speak to Rose. I want my conscience clear so I can do more than kiss you. Stay here. Don't move. Wait for me. Well, I keep having that dream, that Derek is dead dream. So, I mean, the dream is about me being afraid of the House of Candles and, you know, taking the big step, and I'm afraid of having a happy ending. Hey, Rose. She took it so well at the beginning. Do you want to live in with me? You want to live together? Well, I mean, I could. I just, uh, if yes. you don't want to, I guess. Absolutely. You sure you're ready? I'm leaning into the fear to get a happy ending. You and Derek will not work. Moving in together is a mistake of massive proportions. You are dreaming of dead Derek, which should tell you it will not work. I am not sure moving in together is a good idea. Okay. Fine. Fine? Mm. What does that mean? It means that I know you. So what, you didn't believe that I would let you move in in the first place? I believe that you believe it. Look, I'm gonna move very slowly. Baby steps, no sudden moves. You're like a deer in the woods. Okay, I built the House of Candles. That is unprecedented in the Meredith Chronicles. Fine, let's move in together. Fine. You said Derek and I would never make it. People don't really have happily ever afters. People barely have ever afters. So why would Derek and I be any different? And if I'm gonna do this with him, be whole and healthy and be a warm, gooey person who lives with a boy, I need you. I need you on board. I need you to cheer me on. I think... You and Derek will make it. You'll make it work. When were you planning on telling us we had to move out? When were you planning on telling them they had to move out? 
What? Why did I have to move out? Meredith, hey, look, I made this especially for you. It's a zoo. A frat house. And Alex and his parade of women. His parade of skanks. Whatever. Am I apartment hunting or what? I don't know. I have to think about it. Just, you know, eat the muffin, Mayor. Taste the muffin. Remember the muffin. I like my roommates. I like them, too. That was your life. This is our life. And I'm excited about building our life together. Come on. It's going to be great. They're my family. You can't just assume I'm going to kick my family out. And you don't get to announce it to them and ambush me. They're my family. They're who I have. You and them. OK. OK. I'd like to talk about it again but when you're ready. But for now, OK. So you still love me? Meredith. Yes. Every time I actually do something to move into the house, she freaks out. What are you going to do with the trailer? No. Come on. This is a very real possibility. She kicks me out in a week. I'm not letting <laughs> go of the trailer. <laughs> you could always move back to the trailer. No, I want you here. I mean, I may not always be so graceful about it, but I want you here. I couldn't have done it without you. Not one surgery, not one patient. I couldn't have done any of it without you. Thanks. You're wearing an alarmingly high ponytail. Your mother is coming. Why is Meredith eating pot roast? It's a show lunch for the mommy. She's mm -hmm. freaking out. That ponytail, it's gonna blow. Derek tells me you, you uh, grew up right here in Seattle. Are your parents mm, dead? Meredith's mother died last year. Oh. I'm so sorry. And your father? Oh, you know, I should go. Meredith, I was just looking for Derek. I thought you'd be with him. You seem like a very nice person. You've been very kind, and you've given me a chance. And it seems like you want to like me. So it's only fair. You should know. The pink and the ponytail and the smiling with the teeth. It's fake. I'm not the kind of girl mothers like. I'm not happy and bubbly. I'm dark and cloudy because I'm the type of crazy person who feels bad for serial killers. It was very nice to meet you, Meredith. Your father always wanted you to have this for the right girl. Addie wasn't right, clearly. You spent less than an hour with Meredith. You barely even know her. I know enough. I know. It's easier to have compassion for a good person than a murderer. Sweetheart. You see things in black and white. Mm. Meredith doesn't. You need a spoonful of that. You need her. She's the one. Yeah. It's a ring. It's from my mother. Oh, it's from me. It was my mother's, and I'm gonna give it to Meredith soon, so. Whoa, what is that? What you think it is? It's dangerous. People who carry guns are more likely to fire them. Oh, I'm ready to fire it. That's not the problem. She's the problem. She spooks easy. I have to fire at the right time, the right way. Otherwise, she'll panic and bolt. She's not ready. Do you think she's ready? I don't know. Nice couple of cute kids. Yeah, not as cute as ours, but cute. What? Nothing. She said a thing about babies. And the babies were a totally ordinary idea. She's not afraid. She's ready. What are you going to do with it? Do what? Shepard's proposing. No kidding. <laughs> Outstanding. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> yeah, how are you going to do it? I don't know. I just decided. <laughs> Morning. Sir. Shepard's proposing. Congratulations. That's a big step. Thank you very much. You're just going to tell everybody. You're not going to do a big thing, are you? Like some big romantic dream thing, because she'd hate that. Well, she built a house of candles. Yeah, for you. She built you a house of candles, because oh. you like that sort of okay, thing. She doesn't. OK, thanks. Derek is going crazy. This morning I said something about having cute babies, and now ever since he's been acting weird, I mean, he wants babies. He's always wanted babies. Maybe he just doesn't want my babies. No, that that's not it. Yeah, because my babies will have Alzheimer's and suicidal tendencies and split ends. Uh, yeah, you might have something there. OK, listen. You have been acting like a basket case ever since I dropped that stupid little comment about babies. And I'm glad I dropped it, because if you don't want babies or you don't want babies with me and my crappy DNA, just say so. You don't have to avoid me. You don't have to make up lame excuses about work. Meredith, I want your crappy babies. <laughs> you 
you do? All of them. Okay. This is stupid. She's gonna hate this. What, flowers? Girls love this crap. It's cliche. I'm a cliche. Cliches became cliches for a reason. Because they were. Congratulations. Thanks. Addison? I met, uh, Meredith. Uh-huh. <laughs> She's not a midlife crisis. She's a real thing. That's great. I'm happy for you, man. He had all these friends. Kind of freaks me out a little bit. I feel like I don't know him. We don't know them. I know I have no business asking you for anything, but I need your help. I need you to bring Derek back. Sometimes people just want to be left alone. He's planning to propose. He's been carrying around a big ring for weeks. That's not a man who wants to be left alone. You, you cleaned all of your clothes out of the closet at the house. Go home, man. Let's go home. Well, how long are you planning on hiding out here? I'm not hiding. I'm done. So you're just quitting? You should understand better than anybody else. You wrote the book on quitting. Running, hiding. You've written a lot of books, Meredith. That may be true, but I'm here now. Oh. Hmm. You're here now. <laughs> You've wanted me out since the day I moved in. That is not true. Because you're incapable of anything that resembles commitment. You are drunk. <sighs> but that does not give just you the go right. Home, you don't get to just stand here and tell this me. This is what you want. I'm giving you an out. Go. I'm not going anywhere. I said leave. I... Meredith, leave. I know there's a ring. What? The chief told me I know there's a ring. Here's your ring. Is that the best you've got? Because I'm not bailing. We're in this together. You should feel badly that while I was out here, you sent Meredith out here expecting a ring. Why, in God's name, would you do that? She didn't want to come. She wanted to leave you out here alone. I hit the ring in the woods. In the woods. I sent the woman you love out here to help you. I sent the woman who loves you out here to bring you back to your life. If you ruin it with her, that's on you. I don't think I can get her back. Did you call her? What am I gonna say? Thanks for coming. Thanks for calling. I love you. I know. <sighs> no, I don't like this. Did you go home to Meredith? Yeah. Uh, did you propose? She turned me down. You turned him down? Excuse me? You turned him down? I mean, you like the man, don't you? Whether or not I say yes to that ring Derek hit into the woods with a bat is none of your business, sir. A simple yes would do. You don't have to mean it. Meredith. What are you doing? I'm not ready. Yes, you are. I can't make another mistake. You won't. I need to know that at least I have you. No matter what happens in there, I need to know. I need you to say yes. I need to know. I can't say yes. Not if agreeing to be with you forever will make it okay if Izzy dies. I can't say yes. I am here. I'm not going anywhere. I love you. And you can do this. You can do this. I know you can. Shouldn't you and Meredith be out celebrating or something? She turned me down twice. So you showed her your dark side. Meredith never struck me as a woman who was afraid of the dark. The future, Derek. She was confident you succeeded today. Meredith believed in you. Hey. Come on in. If there's a crisis, you don't freeze. You move forward. You get the rest of us to move forward because you've seen worse, you've survived worse, and you know we'll survive too. You say you're all dark and twisty. It's not a flaw, it's a strength. It makes you who you are. I'm not gonna get down on one knee. I'm not gonna ask a question. I love you, Meredith Gray. And I want to spend the rest of my life with you. And I want to.
want to spend the rest of my life with you. You're getting married. It's a miracle. Meredith Grey, child of darkness, has found someone. Don't you want to celebrate that? Just a normal day that ends in a ceremony in a churchy church. This has nothing to do with us. We're just the bride and groom. We're getting married tonight. We're getting married tonight. Let's go to City Hall tomorrow. I don't want to spend another day not being married to you. Okay. I'm getting married today. This is my grocery list. It's old. Uh, this, I mean, this is new. Um, this is my favorite pen, so I want it back, borrowed, and all of it's blue, so you're covered. Meredith and I are gonna go to City Hall this afternoon. Getting married. We could do this another day. There is no other day. Every day is like this. Every day there's a crisis. There's no time. Meredith. I love you, and I do want to marry you today, but there is no time. You have a piece of paper. For what? I want to be with you forever. And you want to be with me forever. In order to do that, we need to make vows. I, I have post-its. OK. What do we want to promise each other? That you love me, even when you hate me. To love each other, even when we hate each other. No running, ever. Nobody walks out, no matter what happens. No running. What else? That we'll take care of each other even when we're old and smelly and senile. And if I get Alzheimer's and forget you. I will remind you who I am every day. To take care when old, senile, smelly, this, is forever. Sign. This is our wedding. I post it. Mm-hmm. Well, if you sign it. Now what? Now I kiss the bride. Married. Married. Oh, 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 sorry. Oh. Sorry. Just, uh, sorry. Sorry, we're sorry, uh. Sorry. But... We'll be sure to clean the countertop. Uh, I, uh, you didn't used to do this before, and now it's kind of all the time, everywhere, and, and yeah. I just. Well, you know, it's, I'm married now, and <laughs> things have changed a little, but, uh, sorry about the countertop. Uh, um, so you guys are, you really, that, that's it, the post-it, that's for real? Yeah, that's for real. Uh, you know what? What are you doing? Just watch and learn. Okay. The tumor is here. Now you've completely lost your mind. T7 goes all the way up T2. You're drawing on the wall. I open up the posterior column, it's chaos. Turn around. Close your eyes. Way, right? Oh my god. Oh, uh, okay. Um, were you trying to get no total accident? I used the thing. Oh, so are we happy uh, about this or are we exercising our legal right to choose? <laughs> okay, all right. <laughs> Congratulations. Let's hug it out. <laughs> okay. Oh my god. Are you, are you are you gonna tell him? Have you told him? No, I just found out. Uh, tell him, Teddy. Derek. Are we gonna tell him now? Yeah. This is very adult. I'm really proud of you, Meredith Grey. I'm proud of me, too. Yes, yes. OK. <laughs> hey, I hope it has its hair. Me, too. Hey, you Paige. I like to say hello to my wife every 48 hours. You didn't come home last night. 
Okay, well, uh, are you gonna come home early tonight? Because we can order in and I have some stuff to tell you. Yeah, we'll be there. Excuse me, could you tell me where to find the chief? Dr. Shepard, he's uh, probably in his office. So, how did he react? I mean, was his world made whole because your womb is not empty and dry? Did he weep like a bitch, baby? I didn't tell him because he was in a mood. So I'll tell him later tonight or something. I mean, it should be special, right? Well, I mean, you found out in the ladies' room squatting over a stick. I mean, that wasn't very special. Why did he get special? I don't know. I feel like my head's going to pop off because I haven't told him, and I want to, and I hate that. It's good news. He should know, right? Mm -hmm. You know what? I'm telling him now. Okay. What? No, I'm coming. I want to see the bitch baby tears. Christina, I'll just stand in the hallway. He'll never know I'm there. Get in here. What, why are we? There's a shooter loose in the hospital. What? Stay here. Don't move. I'll come back and get you when it's clear. Just stay here. Don't move. Oh, my God. 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 Oh, Meredith, the guy with the gun is looking for Derek. I'm going, Christina. No, 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 you are not. Please. You'll get killed, and I'm not gonna let that happen. You wanna go, you gotta go through me. You hurt me when you decided to kill my wife. Do not die. Do you understand? I can't live without you. I, I if you die, police. I die. Okay, good. They're coming. The police are coming. Mayor, Mayor, Mayor they're, they're not. They're not going to get here. They're not coming for us. Not. Not in time. Oh God. I pick you. Mayor, I choose what, you. You don't what, get what, to what, die what, 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 on me. Derek needs surgery. No, you stay what, awake. What do we do? You stay awake. Stay awake, Derek. Huh? Derek, stay awake. Stay awake. table and mirror and my best friend hands are inside his chest. Shoot me. You want justice, right? Your wife died. I know what happened. Derek told me the story. Lexi Gray is the one who pulled the plug on your wife. She's my sister. Dr. Weber, he was your wife's doctor. I'm the closest thing he has to a daughter. And the man on the table I'm his wife. If you want to hurt them the way that you hurt, shoot me. I'm your eye for an eye. Meredith. Meredith. You tell Derek that I love him and that I'm sorry. Meredith. Listen to me. In a few seconds, his heart is going to pump all the blood into his chest and stop beating. You'll see it on the monitor. Just wait. Wait for it. Watch the monitor and wait for it. Please don't stop. Shut up! <laughs> no, no. No! Derek! No! 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 It's over. It's over. He's dead. It's over. <laughs> Give me a 
for a pledge of suture. I'm gonna start to talk to enemies. Jackson, give me his vitals. Got pulse 128 BP cycling. I, oh my God, did you get shot? No, I didn't get shot. Okay, I'm 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 okay. But you could be in shock and not know it. Here, let, let me feel you. For I'm. I'm okay. But there's blood spreading down your thighs. I'm. I'm having a miscarriage. Mayor. Huh? Derek's asking for you. You drive too fast. Just forget about it. I don't want to talk about that. Don't worry about that. Don't worry about it. All I do is worry. All the time I spend every minute of every day worrying that I'm going to get a phone call that you've wrapped your car around a pole. That's why I left you in jail. So that just for a little while, I would know that you weren't dying like you were dying on that table. That's what I think about every time you pull out of the driveway. I'm right here. I'm okay. We're okay. I was pregnant that day. I was pregnant and I lost it. I... You didn't say anything. Could have helped you. I'm gonna find a cure for Alzheimer's. The cure for Alzheimer's? Every time Meredith forgets her keys or asks what day of the week it is, I... At the Phillips Grant, and oh, by the way, the uh, soup of the day in the cafeteria was potato leek soup. You got the grant? Yeah, I got the grant. You got the Alzheimer's grant? <laughs> yeah, I got the Alzheimer's grant. <laughs> Mark is putting together a little celebration of Joe's, but I would much rather celebrate here with you. Mm -hmm. Next time. It's not gonna work. Baby doesn't want to set up shop in a hostile uterus. It's a clinical trial for Alzheimer's. It's serious work, and I couldn't think of anything but you. I know you want to be a part of the trial, but I can't have you anywhere near it. You need to get over this thing where you're just thinking of her as your wife. Because your wife is the only person twisted enough to handle this crap. I was jealous of Callie because she got pregnant without trying. And we try. I get shots. I take my temperature. I put my legs in the air. And nothing. The universe says, screw you, Meredith. And gives Kelly a kid. And then puts Kelly through over shield. I mean, what the hell is going on? What's the point? I mean, is there a reason for this? Because if you can think of a reason, any reason at all, why the universe is so screwed up and random and now would be an amazingly good time to tell me because I really need some answers. No. Listen. I will make sure we have a baby. I promise you. One way or another. You and I will be parents, I promise you. Okay? She's... Let's adopt this baby. What? Are you serious? Yeah. She could be your little girl. She will be. Look, don't get overwhelmed, okay? We're gonna take this list one step at a time, one day at a time, okay? In fact, look, I can see something we could cross off today. Look, right here. All right, these acts, and according to the laws of the state of Washington, congratulations. Well, thank you. Next applicants, please. Dr. Gray tampered with my clinical trial. She switched around the placebos and the drugs, probably invalidating my trial. How is it that you don't know the difference between right and wrong? Because I don't think that things are simply right or wrong. Things are more complicated than that. This was more complicated than that. I am very sorry that I messed everything up, but I would do it again. I don't know how to raise a child with someone who doesn't understand that there's a, a right and a wrong in the world. 
So now I'm going to be a bad mother. That's where we're going with this? You've been saying it for weeks. Maybe you're right. Okay. Maybe you're right. I just need some time to think. I just, I just need some space. She slept through the night and ate like a champ. I miss you. Can we talk? I want to spend time with Zola before I drop her off at daycare. I think I stole a baby. I still don't understand what you possibly could have been thinking. They fired me. Janet basically told me they were going to take Zola away. I mean, possibly send her back to Malawi. You and me. I just needed some time. I just needed to hold her and look at her and just think about how everything, everything got so screwed up. You should take Zola. Janet has a problem with me, not with you. And we need to do whatever we can to make sure they don't take her away. And if that means that you have custody of her and I don't, well, then that's what we need to do. You're not fired. Richard's going to take the fall for you. What? I can't do that. I'm not going to let him do that. Yes, you will. If you want to keep this baby, you will let him protect you. A lot of questions came up today about your relationship, about your employment. Well, she got her job back. That was a misunderstanding. She disappeared. Well, that was a, a miscommunication. And the part about you two living in separate houses, that's miscommunication, too? Look, I get it. It's not easy bringing a child into a relationship. You're allowed to have some bumps in the road. This afternoon, when it looked like you two had split up, your wife got fired, she lied to me about it and left with the baby. I set off some alarms. Now, I'm trying to dial them all back, but it's not that easy to do. Once the system is set in motion, there's a certain protocol that has to be followed. Mm -hmm. Once the agency believes that there are questions about Meredith. Jeff, Meredith is the best mother child could have. She loves Zola. She loves me. And if there is a flaw with hers, she loves people so much that she'll do anything for them. Derek, please. I hear you. But no matter what I say, social services still has to reevaluate the placement. And while that happens, Zola can't be in your home. Derek. What if we don't get Zola back? I mean, what happens to us? What do you want to do? Do you want to stay together? You just couldn't trust me. Why should I ever trust you? You ended my trial. You set back my career. You nearly ended your own. You destroyed Richards. I have no reason to trust you. Well, then why are you with me? Because of that. Because I meant that. I promised I wouldn't run. I promised I would love you. Even when you hate Even me. Even when I hate you. I'm trying, Meredith. I'm trying, but you make it so damn hard. I understand. And I don't want you to keep the promise. Not if you don't want to. And not if you can't trust me with your daughter. I do. I trust you with Zola. Well, you just said. That's not what I said. I know that you took her to protect her. I know you altered the trial for Adele and for Richard. You stood in front of a bullet for me. I know why you do all of it. It's what I love about you. And what you hate about me. Yeah. So you can't trust me at work? No, I can't. Well, that's easy then. If we want to stay together, with or without Zola, we just can't work together. You know, a few weeks ago, I knew exactly how the next 10 years would play out. Work, family. And uh, then, lost the trial, baby, blacklisted by the FDA and Meredith. Some days I miss her so much, I don't know if I'm going to make it. Yes, the judge got in touch with her. He's looking at Zola's files. We're going to get a court date. We're getting a hearing? 
We have a hearing. <laughs> we got a hearing. Mwah. Mm. We're not getting her back. What do you mean? What, what exactly did she say? That we're not getting her back. She said that? She said that the court canceled our hearing date. And when they do that, it means either one of two things. That they looked at our file and they love us and they're giving her to us. In which case, they call Janet and they tell her that. Or that they hate us and they're giving her to another family. And she didn't get the they love us call. Well, maybe they didn't get around to it. She said we should move on. That's what she said. You want to know her exact words were, I think it's time that you and Derek start thinking about moving on. Derek, Janet called. I just got off the phone with Janet. We'll appeal. We'll sue the agency if we have to. They don't think we should be so as parents, Derek. They don't think I'm trustworthy, and they're not the first ones to raise that concern. Meredith. They don't think I should be Zola's mother. She's gone. It's gonna be okay. Okay? We're gonna find a way. Zola was our baby. And she's gone, and I don't want another baby. Meredith didn't want kids. I pushed her. She opened herself up. Now I feel like I... I did this to her. She wanted it too. Or it wouldn't have happened. She'll blame me. Like I've been blaming her. We lost Zola now. If I lose Meredith. She always comes back. She might need a minute to back away, but she comes back. Meredith? Derek? Yes. Isn't that our baby? Yes. Yes, it is. Yours. There's a baby in the bed. I know there's a baby in the bed. What is it? If you ever cheat on me, I'll kill you. Okay. I mean it. Okay. Say it. I will never cheat on you. You want to talk about no. it? No. Okay. Will you still love me if I fail? Do you want me to yell at you or tell you to come home? I want you to tell me what to do. Whatever you decide, I will still love you. We are staying. We're leaving. You're making this choice with Christina. She's not the only factor. I'm your husband. You should make it with me. What happened? The plane crashed. That's what happened. We were in a plane and it crashed. Plane crash. Where is Derek? Derek! I can't find him. I look everywhere. I can't find him. Maybe he's fine. Maybe he went for help. Maybe, but I gotta, I gotta keep looking. I heard your voice. I thought, I thought I was driving. I don't even know how you can think of leaving. Because it's Harvard, Meredith, because you don't turn down an offer from Harvard. You have two, maybe three surgeries left on your hand before... You know what? Maybe they have doctors there. Maybe one can help me. With Mark and the condition he's in and Christina? I'm not saying we leave tomorrow. They're just looking for a time frame. Well, I'm sorry, Derek. I know you really want to go, but I can't even think about it. This is not it. about me. This is about you. You're at the beginning of your career. It's you they want. I don't know. I'm not the same man that they hired. Don't say that. Eighty percent, Meredith. Don't say that. Shh. We stay here, we work here, we move into that beautiful house that you built us. That was our plan. That was before we got a job in Boston. And that was before our plane crashed. You fight for your patience against the worst possible odds, but when things get messy personally, you're gone. Off to the woods to drink and grow a beard. And with everything that's happened in this lawsuit keeping it all alive, maybe she's just worried that the slightest little thing is gonna make you run off to that trailer and leave her alone. In the house she gave her. Not sleeping at night because whichever room she lays down in, she just can't get away from the fact that you're just not there. Take a look at the shirt that I bought Zola. It's 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 in the bag on the counter. Oh, Meredith, guys don't get all goo goo over baby clothes. Just look. What is this? We're gonna have another baby. We are gonna have another baby. <laughs> You told Christina. I haven't. 
still? There's no point. I'm probably gonna miscarry anyway. Marianne. I am just stating the facts. I have a very unstable uterus. This baby has an uphill climb. I am just being realistic. Okay, so I'm not very good at this, but I'm gonna try. I'm gonna show you something, but you have to promise not to blab it to the whole family. Okay. Promise? Yeah. Okay. You? Really? We're having a baby! Yeah. <laughs> Yay! Promise me you won't put me in a home if I get Alzheimer's. You okay? Yeah. Just promise me. I promise. Thank you. We could buy a house. We have a house. We could buy another house. We could buy five houses. We could buy five houses with yards as big as football fields. We could buy the team to play on the football field. Who would play against them? Oh, we buy another team. Mm. Just wanted a house. More money, more problems. Mm. How long do you think till these parasites are hanging us up for a long time? Doctor Gray. That was fast. Glad you're back. I have a patient. She's a 19-year-old college kid, nauseated with a distended stomach, and she says there's no way that she's pregnant. Oh, everybody always says that, and then they always end up pregnant. OK, but if the pregnancy test is negative... OK, I will come with you, but I am not taking point. You are. You know, that really is a problem. People claiming not to be pregnant when they really are. You know. Of course I know. Her boobs got huge about two weeks ago, and she's eating everything in sight. But she didn't tell you. No, but she knows I know. So you know she knows that you know. Mm -hmm. She'll tell me when she's ready to be happy about it. Congratulations. Oh, no, thank you. Yes, she's having champagne. Gray, we're all having champagne. Just, so no, I can't. I... Just try, try. Come on, just try. Is it too much to ask you to try? I can't because I'm pregnant. What? <gasps> <laughs> and I'm happy, so let's celebrate. Wow. Oh, I felt bad. <laughs> what do we call it? It? One of us can say he, one of us can say she, and we'll cover it. Well, no, because then it's going to be born thinking one of us is always wrong. Well, maybe you can't hear anyway. Maybe it's deaf. Deaf is fine. Helen Keller went to Harvard, Meredith. Mm. Okay, well, what if it's not fine? What if it's absorbed twin body? Two heads, extra arms. Stop. I'm just saying, if anyone's gonna have a baby with two heads and three arms and 11 toes, it's gonna be me. Would you just go to sleep, please? How's the baby? Still kicking? Quiet now. Probably dead. Oh, Meredith, stop. Well, I'm just kidding. Mostly. But really, I need you to stop. Bad things happen, and it just makes me feel better to be prepared when they do. But you don't know how things are going to turn out. Right, exactly what I'm saying. <sighs> we own a hospital full of machines. Let's go find out everything we can. Okay, this nine, ten. ten. See, ten fingers. Eleven. Mm, that's not a finger. No. Oh, it's a boy. <laughs> oh. You're my wife. Can we make the decision together if we're going to throw in the towel? Sounds fair. It's not going to be easy on you if I start to lose it. Oh, don't worry. Your project, even with all your marbles. <laughs> I brought you something. You did. I'd barely do my genome. <gasps> you did? Yeah. High risk for liver cancer and prostate cancer? Whoa. Yeah. You're telling me? Male pattern baldness. Late onset, apparently. Mm-hmm. Heroin addiction? I'm a real prize. Oh. It's all crap shit. We didn't get one single definite. We all got maybes. Eh, maybe we live forever. Maybe we do, and maybe I become a bald heroin addict. <laughs> what? Meredith, what is it? You okay? Yeah. Yeah. My water just broke. What? Okay. 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 Oh. Oh, 
you go into labor in the middle of a superstorm. Okay, we need to go over your birth plan. We never talk details. Hang on. I can't bully people unless I know what to bully them about. Maybe you should get back in the bed. Want to go back to bed? No. She says no. Oh. What do you need? Hello, bouncy ball. Ice chips. She says ice chips. Are you gonna do this the whole time? <laughs> I'm gonna check on Connie. See what's taking her so long. Oh, she's with other laboring moms right now. She's busy. You're the only one I care about. The rest can wait. We're having a C-section in the dark. Yes. We are. This is not how I wanted to do this. Well, you once said that about marrying me. Look how that turned out. I love you. <laughs> and the baby is out. What do you see? I don't know. It's too dark. I don't hear him crying. Why isn't he crying? Look at that. He's perfect. <laughs> He's just perfect. Hey, Meredith Grey has survived a bomb, a drowning, a gunman, and a plane crash, and she's still here. She's gonna die when she's like 90, old and warm in her bed. She's not gonna die today. Today she's gonna be fine. I hope so. She has to be. She's our person. An hour and a half to go get milk? I think, um, I might have closed my eyes in the store parking lot. Is he asleep? No, he hates sleep. He's staring at the mobile. I don't know how such a little kid can puke on so many things. I don't know. Are you asleep? No, nobody's asleep. Are you asleep? Shepard? Oh, have you seen my wife and baby? Wait, Meredith's here. Meredith. Crap, I meant to text you. I woke up to nothing and nobody. The woman's wearing mismatched shoes. Got us some slack. I have to go check on Richard. Send me a note next time. You look like hell. You know you're in a building full of beds. I just need to go lie down. Yeah. Are we ready to go? Uh, almost. Someone doesn't want to put her shoes on. Meredith Gray, as I live and breathe. I haven't seen you in ages. How's uh, Derek liking maternity leave? He's on paternity leave. Yeah, OK. We have a deal. I don't work, neither does he. It's working out well. I live in your house. You're bored out of your minds. Yeah, they've got all this pent-up surgical energy, and now everything's a competition. It is not. And he's winning. He is not winning. He couldn't even get Zola to put her shoes on tonight. I did that. I got her to put her shoes on. So I'm winning. I need to come back to work. You see my wife? Uh, she uh, hopped on a rig with the paramedics. Damn it. What are you doing? Repairing a gastric rupture. Fine. You can't just decide to operate. Derek, you're better at charming the donors than I am. I admit it. You can have it. We had a deal. You're more than welcome to come and join me. Come get a little blood on your hand. I'll even let you hold a retractor. All right, I'm gonna change. Well, I haven't felt this relaxed in months. Oh, me either. <sighs> what? Reminiscing. About? You, me. An exam room and your panties pinned to a bulletin board. Oh, the problem. <laughs> Except you didn't have blood on your suit and I wasn't wearing a sweatshirt. I think it's sexy. Now you're doing the sparkly eye thing. I have no idea what you're talking mm -hmm. about. Is it working? <laughs> oh. oh, this is killing me. Four days back to work, and I'm ready to end it all. Hey, how's Zola? Karev filled me in, said she was a real champ. She didn't get her princess tea party. Wait, I thought Callie was going to do that. Callie has moved out, and she was supposed to do the food shopping, so now there's no food. Zola has two stitches in her head and had cereal for dinner. And the house is a mess because I couldn't get the baby to sleep. And she didn't get her princess tea party. Why are you yelling at me? I had a big surgery. So did I! 
But you didn't answer your phone. She cut her head, and you didn't answer your phone. So I had to go comfort her, which means that I didn't get to do my surgery, a heart liver transplant. Those never happen, and I didn't get to do it. I'm sorry, but that is not my fault. It is your fault because you didn't answer your phone. I was in a surgery. I shouldn't have to choose between being a good mother and being a good surgeon. I never asked you to do that. Never have I asked you to do that. Did you get my text? Sorry, I was stuck there. I had to get this thing out by tonight. I got hung up too. I just barely got them down. Just now? I know. It's so late. I know. I tried. It's not working. No, it isn't. I just can't seem to make the pieces of it. I agree, but I don't know how. I think I do. I want to spend more time on this BCI research. So you want to take on more? No. Less, actually. This is a big year for you, and you need time to make it work. I had a big year. I can step back, scale down my surgeries, focus on this research, spend time with the kids, and give you the slack you need to make this year count. I don't like it. What? You'll resent me, and so will the kids, and... and... I don't want to be my mother. You're not your mother. You know that. It feels unfair. Spending time with the kids is not a consolation prize. It is the prize. You want fair, maybe down the road I'll give you a, a year with them. Maybe when Zilda's dating, because I don't want to be around for that. I love you. No, you should, but I'm doing this amazing for you. Mm. You know what this is? Yes, it's a fork. No, it's the future. Go watch your liver model. I'm going to put the kids down. Hey, what? um, listen, I just want to thank you, because this research is going to take so much more time than I expected, and I couldn't do it without the time you're giving me, and I know you're turning down a lot of stuff, so thank you. It's my pleasure. Dr. Derek Shepard? Yes. Please hold for the President of the United States. What? Please hold for the President of the United States. Meredith, when the President of the United States calls you on the phone... I get it. You, know, you can't say no to the guy. Nope. I mean, when they start putting government money behind a, a, a program like that, mapping the human brain, the impact that that has worldwide is just... Big impact. Was that about me? No, it's about me. The president called and I have to go back on a promise I made to her. Oh, good. Better you than me. President? Of the United States. Uh, let's start with your wife. So, uh, you two met when she was a student of yours, was she not? Yeah, I suppose. Mm. 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 Is that bad? Like the blue or the uh, burgundy? The blue makes you look too handsome. Oh. You don't want the president to be distracted by those piercing blue eyes. Oh, you want me to get the job? I want neurosurgeon Dr. Shepard to get the job. I don't want my husband Dr. Shepard to get the job. That's complicated. The White House called. You got it? No, it's much bigger than that. That's why the interview process was so exhaustive. They want me on the advisory board. They want me to run the thing. You're mad. No. I'm not mad. I, I just, I, I'm, I'm, I'm happy for you. But there isn't room for me to take my career to the next level and for you to run the thing. Hi, you've reached Dr. Shepard. Please leave a message and I will return your call. Derek, the daycare is closed. The babysitters have not heard from you, and no one is answering at home. Where are our children, Derek? Three hours for three hours, Derek. I had no idea where our children were. I had my hand inside a guy's stomach, and all I could think was... I told you I had it handled. You told me you had them. I thought I did. I had a surgery. I had to teach. Hunt and Weber accused me of dropping the ball. You dropped this ball. If you put our kids somewhere, Derek, you have to tell me. I'm sorry. I should have called you. I, I, I dropped the ball. <sighs> this ball can't get dropped. I know. Nothing catastrophic has happened yet, but it could. We've, we're juggling too much. Something has to change. Are you saying it has to be me? I'm not saying that, Meredith. I'm just saying that something's got to change. I know. I know. I just, I don't know what to do. Oh, neither do I. Hey, stranger. Hey. What are you drinking? You know what? Doesn't matter. You can dump it out. This is better. Champagne is perfect because 
I was wrong about the Amelia situation. She doesn't want to leave. She wants to stay. She can take over your service. She can help out with the kids. You can bring Matt to your heart's content. I don't have to pull my hair out. It is the answer we've been looking for. This is great. It is, right? Yeah, Amy can move to Seattle, and we can move to DC. That wasn't the point of my story. I met him there. I met the president. He came to us. We walked him through everything we've been working on. And then at the end of it, he said that he wanted to make this a weekly thing. They offered me a position at the NIH. It's the job. I'll be right there on the ground doing the actual brain mapping work myself. They've given me everything. But we can't just pack up and move across the country. They have promised to have an attending position waiting for you at James Madison Hospital. If Amy wants to move to Seattle, she can take over my practice without me hovering over her, and she will thrive. Alex is leaving, Christina's moving on. They're, they all have their next step. This could be our next step. This should be our next step. You are a gifted surgeon with an extraordinary mind. Don't let what he wants eclipse what you need. He's very dreamy, but he is not the son. You are. I think I need to stay here. I took the job. And you were supposed to be stepping back. You said, take this year and make it count, and I'll make sure you can do it. And you lied. Sorry. I lied. It's a once in a lifetime opportunity. So you got this thing, and I gave up that piece. And I found a way to make it work with my job, my kids, and my research with less help from you. And You're I You're not did a victim. It. I'm killing myself just as much as you are. And then you wanted Flying more pieces and, and more pieces. And now this is just so I can too spend much. Time you can't with just drag us away so I can come father. live in your shadow. Shadow, you have a job. You're going to be working at James Madison. Right. That's how my father got his first job here. They wanted my mom, so she had to call the university and pull some strings and find something for Thatcher to do. It's called a trailing this spouse. This is not like this that. This is exactly that. And it's not what I signed up for. You know, you're, you're being selfish. Well, I have to be, Derek, because you believe that your career is more important than mine. At this moment in time, it is. No, not at this moment. Always. You will always be that hotshot surgeon, and I will always be that young intern who fell in love with you. That's how you see yourself. That's your problem. I can't do anything about that. Is that is not how I see myself. That is the issue here. DC, you can do your surgeries, you can do your research, you can do the portal veins. There is nothing you can do here that you can't do. But there. I don't want to. We're not just talking about my job, Derek. We're talking about my life. I grew up here. I made my family here. I helped to rebuild the hospital here that has my sister's name on it, my mother's name, my name. I live here. My life is here. I don't want to leave. You're asking me to choose between this job and my family? I am simply saying, I am not going anywhere. I am staying here. I told Derek I am not moving to DC. The children and I are staying here. All right, the miracle is over. The miracle is not over. We're not a miracle. Shut up. You're going to stand behind? She is. And you're cool with that. We're together, but living apart. Live a partners. See that? I gave it a name. Now it's a thing. Yeah, I'm familiar with that thing. I did it with Miranda. How'd it work out for you guys? Well, seeing as I'm not living in L.A. anymore, I'd say it didn't. That's not crazy, right? To go after this opportunity? I'm not a bad person for wanting this. No, but Meredith's not either, and this is her home. It's her kid's home. I can't blame her for wanting to stay. I mean, people do it, right? It's not conventional, it's not easy, but people do it. I mean, if we map brains, we can figure this out. Are you trying to convince me or you? <sighs> I mean, I don't want to split up our family either, but I certainly don't want to go and then resent him for the rest of my life. And that's what would happen. And he doesn't want that either. So I, I, I really just, I need to go talk to him about yeah, this. Well. I... Hi. What are you doing here? I just got off the phone with the White House. I resigned from the brain mapping initiative. What? I'm not moving to DC. Why would you do that? Well, I don't want to live anywhere else where my kids are growing up here. I don't want to be apart from them or you. It's, no job is worth that to me. I want to be with you yeah. and the kids here. No. What? This is not what we discussed. I mean, you should call them back and tell them you were kidding. I did not ask you to do this. I never wanted you. I know you didn't. I chose. I chose you and the kids. I can't talk to him right now. Oh, come on. You gave up the job in DC. He's staying and you're still mad. You won. No. 
I never asked him to stay. This wasn't a compromise. I didn't win. He forfeited, so we both lost. So you're not talking to him? He's walking around like he's a martyr, waiting for me to be grateful I am not grateful. My career is just as important as his. I'm the son. I'm the son. And he can go suck it. You were king of all neurosurgeons, right hand to the president, and now you can't have that. So you need to be king of the hospital and kick around the peons. Well, you of all people should understand that this was the future of neuroscience. I mean, this is what we would have dreamt of in med school if we thought it was even possible that it could be done. Then you shouldn't have given it up. But the least you can do is stop stomping around here punishing people for a choice you made. Well, I didn't make a choice. Meredith made a choice and backed me into a corner. And because I love my kids, and I love my wife, and I want to do what's best for her, I do. I want to give her everything. But something like this will not come again. This is it. This is as high as I go. I have never taken a step back in my career, ever. I've never felt like this before, and I feel like she forced me. Meredith, you say that you want her to have everything, but not if it interferes with you having your everything, and it is not fair. And I am saying no to because you have to live with the choices you make. I am trying to. How are you feeling? Hey, uh, not great. Weird day. You don't have a fever. You're still sick. No, I, I wasn't sick. I, I'm li I am a little drunk, though. You're drunk? Yes, I was at Alex's. Okay, Meredith, you gotta help me. I, I am I'm trying to understand. Okay, listen, this crazy so thing is happening. You're here to make the most of your career. Just listen to me. Wait, so I gave up the brain mapping initiative so you can play hooky and get drunk with I, your friends? I thought we were in Seattle. I needed a day, Derek, so I took it. That's fine, I just need to know why. No, you don't. You want to hear that I cured cancer or that I found a vaccine for ALS before breakfast? It'd be great, anything would be great. There it is again. What? You're waiting for me to pay up for this grand sacrifice that you made for our family. How am I supposed to do anything with you pressuring me and hovering over me for a decision that you made? And you're waiting for me to fail. I'm waiting for you to shine. Remember, that's why you're staying here. And I told you, you should go to DC and shine there. It was you who decided to stay here and martyr yourself and now make me feel guilty because of a decision you made. Well, I am done. I'm done feeling guilty and I am done measuring my accomplishments against yours. I won't do it anymore. Just stay out of my way. Wow. You sound just like your mother. Meredith. Derek, not now. Five minutes, just five minutes. <sighs> Derek, I swear to God, I can't do this. I am sorry about the thing I said about your mother. Why? You meant it. It was in the heat of the moment. I, I, I just did You know, you wanted to hurt me and you did that, so at least have the guts to stand by it. Will you just hear me out? You could do worse than compare me to a brilliant surgeon. But you meant it in the sense that I am cold and ambitious and selfish, a horrible wife and mother. I got that. Oh, well, I love how you just switch it around so you can make it fit. You think I sound like my mother? You do. And now I get to live under the weight of your disappointment, too? Because of something you gave up. If you recall, I gave it up for you. Oh, you gave it up for me, but I don't want it. Go. You should get on the next flight out. Call the president and get the job back. Just go. I don't know who I am anymore. Not anybody ever thought I'd... I'd be. I tried to make the right choices for Meredith kids, you, and I'm, I'm angry all the time. I'm miserable, and I don't know what to do with it. All I do is hurt people. The last people I want to hurt, and I just, I just can't get control of it. You don't trust me, and all you want to do is fight I me. don't want to fight with you, but I'm not going to compromise myself, Meredith, just because well, you you've think you've already I... done that. You've already compromised yourself and diminished yourself for me. I feel that. Your pissiness and your resentment, Derek. You know why? Do you know why I resent you? Because you've never had my back on this. Not since the day I told you I would stay. I told you that you and the kids were more important. You have been determined to prove me wrong, that this is the wrong choice. I have proven it because you can't be happy here. You diminish everyone around I you. I did this for you. I gave up everything for you. There it is, everything. 
You gave up everything. That was everything to you? I'm done. I'm not going to do this anymore, this constant battling. I'm not battling, but I just yes. am not going to let yes, you just... Yes, you think I'm some sort of tyrant determined to keep you down. You keep you down, and now I'm paying for it. And I don't know how to fix it. You should have just gone to D.C. Is that what you want? Because that door is wide open. That's what you want. Meredith, they offered me the job again. Today, I could take this job right now. You should take it. Debra, it's Dr. Shepard. Glad I could catch you. It was great that you came by today. Please tell the president I would be thrilled to accept the post. Yes, absolutely. We can talk more then. I look forward to it. I will see you soon. Good, go. Oh, I'm going. No, I mean it. Go now. I don't want to fight anymore. Oh, I don't either. And I don't want you gone. I know that I told you to go, but... I mean... This isn't us. This isn't how we end, is it? I don't want it to. I'm trying. I'm trying to. Listen, I, my flight's been delayed all day. I'm still at the airport. I can come home. Do I come home? No. No, go. Meredith. You know, in, in, in a good way, go. And do what you have to do. We can do this. People do this. People do, yes. OK, so go and do what you have to do, and we will figure this out. We can do this. We can do this. You're pitching a no-hitter. You haven't lost a single patient since November 14th. 89 surgeries in a row with good outcomes. Did you say November 14th? Yeah. No, no, it's not that. It's the date that it started. What about it? That's the day that Derek left. And I've been perfect ever since. Have not lost one patient. Not one. Since the day he left. What does that tell you? That you're right? That I'm better off without him? You were right. I don't need Derek. I don't need him in my house. I obviously don't need him to prove I can have 89 good outcomes in a row. I'm doing great. My kids are happy. My career is soaring. Derek going to DC did exactly what it was supposed to do, which is remind me of who I am outside of my marriage. Which, by the way, I'm kind of amazing. OK. But that doesn't mean that I don't want to share it with him. I want to tell him that I'm weird. On a streak. Hello? Hi, is he in the lab? What? I know this is Derek Shepard's phone. Who, who is this? Hi, you've reached Dr. Shepard. Please leave a message and I will return your call. Hey, maybe a kid stole it and his mom picked it up. Stole what? Derek's phone. He was in surgery and a nurse picked it up. They pick up our phones all the time. Hmm. He was in the lab, and a research assistant picked it up. He was in the bathroom, and a janitor picked it up. He was in an accident, and a paramedic picked it up. Whoa. Hey, listen, it's not the best option, but viable. I'm just saying, don't go looking for zebras here. I think Derek is, he's done this before. What? Moved to a new city, got a new job, ignored his wife's calls, met a girl, fell in love, started over. What are you talking about, met a girl? Me, he met me. He left Addison when the marriage got hard. Moved to Seattle, met me in a bar. What if he's doing the same thing now? <clears throat> Look, I've watched you two suck face for years. You've disgusted me for a long, long time. He's into you. And if a guy is still into you, it still means he wants to do you. If he still wants to do you, mm -hmm. you're solid. Mayor, I lived down the hall from you guys. I've. I heard the sex noises, I've seen the drama and the tears, and there's no way that Derek's... Look, you and Derek are living proof that love exists, that it works, that there is hope. You guys are a frickin' romance novel, and I, for one, am rooting for you, too. Team Merdair! I took the first flight, left my keys. 
Uh-huh. You called me, and a woman answered my phone. I called you, and a woman answered your phone. Go find Who was the woman on Derek's phone? I don't know. She said nothing? Yesterday, she couldn't stop talking about it. All I know is Derek came home last night. <gasps> no. Crap. Crap? Why crap? A woman answers his phone. He immediately gets on a plane and shows up in the middle of the night. He's here to apologize. Because he has something to apologize for. I left my phone at the lab. By the time I figured out I left it, I was already at the airport coming to you. And she picked up your phone. Why? I don't know. She probably thought it was me. I called her from the airport, and then she told me she spoke to you. Is that it? Is that everything you have to say? That's all there is to say. I've told you everything, the whole story, all of it. But if you want, I'll go through it all again. And she's your research fellow? Yes. Just your research fellow. I can't do this, I'm sorry. Uh, tell me that this is all in my head, that there isn't something between us. I know it's there. I love my wife. I'm married. I don't want anything other than what I have with her. I have to go. Right now, I have to go. I am calling Post-it. Zola and Bailey, and tumors on the walls, and ferry boat scrub caps. I thought DC was everything. And I was wrong. You. You. You're everything. I love you. And I'm not gonna stop loving you. Meredith, I can't live without you. I don't wanna live without you. And I'm going to do everything in my power to prove it. I can live without you. But I don't want to. I don't ever want to. So Derek's back. Is that a question? No, it's just... And I'm glad I am. For you and the kids. And I don't want to make this all about me. It's just... He says he wants to come back and just work for me. I'm still not sure what you're asking. Well, I'm asking, should I believe that? Can I believe that? I do. You do? Yeah, he's different. I don't know how to explain it, but I think he realizes what makes him happy, and he's choosing it. And that makes me happy. I just wish, I don't know, you could stay, or I could come with you or something. I'll be back soon, you know that. I know. I know, I just feel like I just got you back, and you're going again, and I, I just have to stay here. You're right, you do. You have to stay here. Don't move. Wait for me. I'll be back before you know it. Okay. This is Dr. Shepard's wife. Uh, no, he's not here. Can I take a message for you? Okay, sure. Oh, I thought he was there. Okay, sure, no problem. Okay, thank you. Bye-bye. Well, that was weird. What was? Nothing, just that was the White House calling. Derek never showed up at his meeting this morning. Derek missed his meeting in D.C., and I haven't heard from him. That's not weird. Okay. It's not like I should have heard from him. I, we don't call each other every second. We're not those people. I'm a surgeon. I'm busy. He's in D.C. He's busy. So it's fine that I haven't heard from him. Look, you and Derek went down in a plane. You drowned. He got shot. You gave birth in a power outage. Is this supposed to make me feel better? I'm just saying, you have every reason to be distracted, every reason to think the sky's falling. Do you need to go? No. OK, well, how long can you go without hearing from him before you absolutely go crazy? I don't know. I, I, at 6, 6.30, maybe? OK, then let's say 5. At 5 p.m., if you haven't heard from him, you can panic. You can call the police, call the paramedics. You can freak out until your little heart's content, but not one minute before and not in this OR. Can you do that? 
5 p.m. 5 p.m. Yes. Any word? No. 5 o'clock. What's at 5 o'clock? Derek missed his meeting in D.C. this morning. I called him and he didn't pick up. And I haven't heard from him all day. 5 o'clock is my deadline. If there's no news, then I'm going to go home and freak out. You're freaking out now, though, aren't you? Yeah. You're going over everything you can think of. You're going back to the last conversation you had and playing it over and over in your head from beginning to end, right? You know, remember ages ago, you and I had a really big fight. And I told you, I said, you're like coming up for fresh air. Like I was drowning and you saved me. I still feel that way. When I see you, when we have our family. That's the feeling, it's you. It's always been you. Another baby? Sure. Uh, seriously? I'm completely serious. Like right now, right. you wanna, oh no, you are serious. <laughs> Ma'am, is this the home of Derek Shepard? It is. He's my husband. I'm afraid there's been an accident. Could you come with us, please? Dr. Gray, I can't. We can't tell you how sorry. I am so sorry for your loss. The call to not get a head CT was a bad call. We're not a trauma center or a teaching hospital. You did the best you could. Ma'am, I thought that if this was a good time, I might take a moment to explain how this all works. Where are the papers? Mrs. Shepard, there's some things you need to know, some things we need to discuss, difficult things. I'm a doctor, Dr. Gray. I'm a surgeon, just like my husband was. I know how this works. You've waited the requisite number of hours, and now you can officially declare him dead. Normally, you'd talk to me about organ donation, but by the looks of his chart, there's not much left that works to donate. So, the ICU needs a bed. Those must be the papers. The papers you want me to sign to decide what to do with my husband. Now that he's dead, but not really dead. Do we ship him off to a long-term care facility and cross our fingers and hope for fairy tales and magic? Or do I pull the plug? Or stop all curative intervention? Discontinue all routine monitoring? Remove all the catheters, drains, and tubes? End any and all treatments that might provide comfort to the patient? Terminate all life-sustaining measures? and behave as any sane doctor would behave. Is that about cover it, doctor? Is that what you want to talk to me about? While I sit here with my sleeping children? You want to talk about killing my husband? Give me the papers. Ma'am. Give me the papers!
Are you ready? Daddy was driving in his car. Yeah. Is he coming home soon? No, he was in an accident. Oh. Well, is he hurt? He was. Are the doctors fixing him? Is he going to surgery? No, they can't fix him. Then you should go in there and fix him. Zola. You fix everyone. Zola, I can't fix him. Why? I can't fix him. Because... Because no one can fix him. Because he's dead. So... <laughs> Daddy died. Just to celebrate Derek Shepard's life, a day for each of us to say our goodbyes. Every day celebrate him in some way as a father as a husband as a brother as a friend dr. gray your husband is here hey apparently I'm your emergency contact feels like a house. I came back, but I'm not home. And I really want to be home. Hi, Meredith, this is Penny. Penny, this is Meredith. Penny, it's a pleasure, won't you come in? Okay. Meredith, don't do that, please go mingle. Please, can we just talk? Okay, here's how this is gonna go. You are going to make a drink, and you can make small talk with anyone you want, except for me. Callie will come back, we will have a meal, you'll leave my house, and then I never have to see you again, okay? Where do you work? At the moment, uh, technically I'm between gigs. What does that mean? Well, uh, last year, the hospital where I was working was closed down. Where were you working before? The um, place that closed? It was a, a smaller suburban center out by the Sound. She was at Dillard. Dillard Medical Center. Dillard. Dillard, isn't that, um... That's where Derek died. Isn't that right, Penny? That's right. Perfect Penny killed my husband. Excuse me. Meredith, why aren't you saying anything? Because I really, I really don't want to talk about this. Yeah. Clearly. 
you knew who she was all night and you never bothered telling me. Amelia? She killed Derek. You invite her in here, you, you let me sit there and talk to her all, I, well, I hugged her. Why, why, why would you do that to me? I did this to you. You should have told me. You should have. I thought that you and I, I did nothing to you. I lost my husband and the father of my children and you're falling apart. I don't get to do that because I have three kids. So please shut up and get out of my room. Get her out of here before I kill her. You need to forgive her. Forgive her for not being there. For being the wrong shepherd. Just enough to remind you of what's missing, but not enough to bring him back. So you can forgive Blake for being in that room when a wrong decision cost you your husband. To forgive Derek for dying too soon. To forgive yourself for hating him for dying too soon. Let it go, Mira. I lost my husband two years ago, and you are the first person that I've been with since. You're not ready. I guess I'm not. Mira, what is it? It's his stupid, stupid blanket. We're done cleaning. This was Derek's blanket. I always hated this stupid thing. It's, it's not soft, it's not warm, it's not a great color. He had it in the trailer, he brought it here, made it to the dream house with us. He made a bed in front of this fireplace for us once. And now he's gone, and I still have the damn thing. Everyone said I was ready. You said I would be okay, so I thought I should just do it and get it over with. But I, I wasn't ready for it to be. Hey, well, what about you? Did you have a big wedding? No. We wrote our vows on a on a post-it note. <laughs> he was afraid of commitment? No, just the opposite. It was me. He loved me so much, he didn't care. Poor guy. I barely came from a wedding. What did you give him? We went to City Hall. Just the two of us. That's nice. Yeah, it was very nice. All this time, I felt like I've been robbed, but I came back, so all the years I had with Derek and the, the kids and the marriage, it's, it's all a bonus. How do we switch out one of the doctors on the panel? We don't. Why? Because that one killed my husband. You don't get to sit up there and ask questions about my daughter. If you want to take my license and make sure I never see another patient again, then you do that. But you have absolutely no right to ever mention my daughter's name because you are the one who killed her father. You don't remember me. Meredith. But I remember you. As the coward who stood over my dying husband. You're gonna be fine the love of my life, and you didn't even attempt to do burr holes after he failed to get him a head CT. The look in your eye when you spoke about Derek today made me realize what it is I've been feeling this whole time. You didn't just love Derek. You respected him. It's different, and you can't compare. Gray! Gray, Gray, can you hear me? Oh, my God. Kids. I don't understand. 
The sand isn't real, Meredith. I miss you. I know. was knowing they were getting it wrong. I didn't want to leave you, but I knew, you know, at a certain point. I came to the hospital. I know. You could hear? Not through my ears. Dying is exhausting. There comes a point where the desire to rest overrides the desire to live. You got that. You gave me permission to go. You told me it was okay. You got me. You gave me everything I needed until my last breath. Ellis draws this picture of us. I'm in a wedding dress uh -huh. and you're in a suit. I show her the post-it note, but she just... Hates it. Hates it. <laughs> she feels robbed. Well, she gets that from my mother. <laughs> yourself less. I don't want to leave the kids. I don't want you to leave the kids. It's not time yet. There's no pain here. You want to know a secret? I even miss the pain. You have to go. I'm so tired. It's not your time yet. Our kids need you. You have to go. 